Hello class, this is Mr. Reynolds, and we want to take a look at the ear today. So um, the first thing, what you're going to need to do is be able to name most of these structures here, and we'll list all those, okay? Uh, these are parts of the ear. This is considered the, this is considered the outer ear, all the way from the outer funnel that funnels, the oracle that funnels sound down into the uh, auditory canal. And then it hits the number 14 here is the eardrum, the tympanic membrane, and makes it vibrate back and forth some. <clears throat> okay. Then in the middle ear, the middle ear are basically these bones, <clears throat> the hammer, anvil, and stirrup, malleus, incus, and stapes. Okay. The inner ear is this snail-shaped structure, which is number 10, which is called the cochlea. This houses the organs for hearing and the three semicircular canals, which is for balance, okay? This nerve that goes to the brain, the, the, it comes together, it branches off here, and this number eight goes down to the, uh, this branch of the vestibular nerve goes to the semicircular canals. The branch of the hearing ones, for actually hearing, goes to the cochlea, okay? Then they start traveling together up to the brain, so it's got a few different names. It's called the auditory nerve, the uh, vestibulocochlear nerve, uh, the acoustic nerve. Okay, uh, this structure over here is a real small look at what is inside the cochlea. This is the organ for hearing. It's, a, it's also known as the organ of cordy. As I said, it's in this. It's actually in the center of this snail-shaped structure all around here. Okay. Um, but like I said, the whole thing is called the organ of cord, and we'll take a better look at it as, as we go. There's fluid out here. There's fluid out here also. There's fluid on the other side. Uh, there's, there's a shelf-like structure. Actually, this is called the tectorial membrane, okay? And it's being, vibrations are hitting it. <clears throat> uh, liquid vibrations are, are striking this thing and pushing it down and it's pushing into some sensory cilia okay which then these track and go to the nerve which is going to lead to the brain okay so uh next slide uh being able to label some of these a little bit better this is the um i like green uh, just the outer part of the ear you don't have to know all the different parts of it on other diagrams you'll see uh, this will be named a certain part. This ridge is named a certain part. This is a certain part. This is a, no, there's just the whole outer ear that acts as a funnel to funnel sound down into the external auditory meatus. Okay, the whole ear is called the whole outer part is called the auricle, a u r i c l e, and it funnels sound down into the into the ear, auditory canal, and that bumps into the the um, the eardrum, which formerly named the tympanic membrane, okay, tympanic membrane, organs of tympany of hearing, okay. Um, once it's into there, once it's it's vibrating back and forth like the top of a drum with someone beating the drum, it's a thin membrane. It's gonna vi its vibrations are gonna tap against the uh, the first bone of the middle ear, these three audit, these three auditory ossicles, okay, um, is the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup, also known as the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. And we'll we have another slide later that names those, okay. And then this stapes, which is the smallest bone on the body, and you'll see the next diagram, all three of these bones fit on the face of a penny. It's pretty impressive on how small they are. But the smallest bone in the body is the stapes, okay? And it's attached to the, the cochlea here. It's tapping on the sides of the cochlea, and there's fluid in there. It's just like if your finger is tapping on a bowl that's filled with water, it's going to set up some vibrations, okay? So this lightly taps on there, okay? And we'll look at a problem with this with this later, okay? Uh, where it attaches on here, at the base of the stirrup, the base of the stapes, it's known as the oval window, okay? All right, the snail-shaped structure for sense of hearing. Oh, look what it did. It gives us a little cross-section of this, 
and there's bone on the outside bone on the outside and there's a chamber on the inside okay that there's no color you can barely make that out okay that's where this organ for hearing is okay um where this this whole thing is actually the whole thing is the organ of cordy it's in the inner part of this all right uh backing up uh over here this tube this eustachian tube or also known as the as the auditory tube okay i like eustachian tube that's what i grew up learning eustachian tube leads down into the throat okay so that's why a lot of times if someone has a, if someone has a sore throat or a throat infection and then it's healed up maybe a week later not a lot of, a lot of times about a week later they come down with an ear infection hmm surprise surprise this leads right into it okay and this is why also if you're um if you're taking off in an airplane you're increasing altitude very very quickly or decreasing you're supposed to be chewing gum because every time you're swallowing you're opening closing uh, you're moving air in and out of this eustachian of this eustachian tube and the the air the air pressure inside this this um this middle cavity this middle portion of the ear gets to be stabilized with it outside and if you don't it hurts okay it starts to swell up and and will hurt some or right, pressure builds up and it hurts uh other structures these are the three auditory ossicles i'm sorry i'm sorry the three semicircular canals and these will be used for uh balance actually specifically dynamic equilibrium so this is when you're moving okay um we're gonna see this little on each one of these a uh, bulb shaped end is going to be called an ampullaris um, here's the nerve that we saw before that tracks up to the brain okay part of it is vestibu vestibular nerve part of it is cochlear nerve um, let's put let's put those in right now so vestibular nerve the vestibular branch and the cochlear branch of this nerve okay and together it's going to be called the yeah we'll say we'll say we'll call it the acoustic nerve okay like i said there's a few different names for it auditory nerve vestibulo cochlear nerve um okay those are structures of that so far we're not going to go into the details with this one yet okay this is this is when we get very very internal very specific we're still looking at general overall stuff so so far the uh the oracle the um external auditory meatus or the um let's external auditory meatus meatus is any opening in a bone right so uh let's give this with this this tissue that's lining the bone on the inside and this canal let's call this thing the uh the audit i've seen this before usually the auditory canal okay now does it go through that opening in the bone yes it does okay but there's soft tissue around it you can see you can see bone out here actually let's put bone and so this is all bone stuff here and you see bone stuff over here see bone on this side bone all around in here so this is very much an opening in a bone oh here's some bone too cool ah there's my bone ah that's what they did let's uh let's erase this just a little bit that's some more cartilage we're going to and let's put this over here where they're labeling bone on it that makes sense all right but like i said it's the opening tube shaped opening going through a bone is a meatus all right uh you need to know the the eardrum or the tympanic membrane you'll need to know the malleus incus and stapes which will do oval window will do the three parts of the three semicircular canals in their sensory organs that's a tomorrow thing the um, organ of cordy inside this inside the cochlea is going to be main uh, maybe today maybe tomorrow um 
get another use station tube. Okay, and know, um, know this whole thing is the acoustic nerve. And we'll be going through the vestibular and cochlear branch even more. Okay, going on. Okay, uh, let's focus here on this nerve. I, I for this one I um, I googled in um, I googled in middle ear for this. Okay. And a lot of times they'll say it, uh, some will say that it starts with the tympanic membrane. Some say it starts with the stirrup and whichever, or the, the, the malleus. Um, but we'll, we'll include it here. So this is more in the middle section. As you can see the diagram up at the top. <clears throat> We're looking more of the ones in the middle. Um, anyway, sound waves come in, hit the tympanic membrane, and it starts to vibrate back and forth. And that makes the, the vibrations are picked up by the, the malleus, which looks like a hammer as it's pounding into the anvil or the incus. And I like the Latin names. And it's pounding, and then it's, I shouldn't say pounding, then it's tapping on the stapes, or it's shaped like uh, a horse stirrup. Okay. Um, Here's a couple things that aren't, um, yeah. Okay. This isn't shown in here, and I'm not sure exactly where these muscles go. This is a little more detail, but you've experienced this. You've been in a concert, and you walk in there, and man, it's hurting your ears. And after about 10 minutes, your ears adjust, in a sense. Um, we have a reflex mechanism that actually there's a muscle attached to the malleus there's a muscle attached to the stapes okay that those contract and they pull the malleus further away and they pull the stirrup further away so the sound so these bones aren't real super super close to each other and that any little movement they have it taps on the other it gives them more space in there this whole thing is in uh you, you wake up the next morning and your ears are still ringing it takes about a half day until those go away okay but that's a temporary protective reflex it's called the it's called the tympanic reflex and it's those two muscles that contract and pull the the malleus and the stapes further away. Okay, <clears throat> um, like I said, it's it's very it's temporary, but it's supposed to be a temporary protective thing, so we're not damaging too much hearing. Okay, as the sound is transmitted on, we don't want waves of fluids slamming into these structures. So this helps to prevent that when the sound is too much. Um, okay, uh, at the base of the stapes, it's going to hook onto the oval window. Okay, and that's at this. This section is called a vestibule. This section here, at really at the beginning of this is kind of this area. This area is in between the uh, the semicircular canals and between the cochlea okay uh, but that's where the, the stapes is lightly tapping onto all right and for us to hear the sound waves are going to go through this middle portion here and now we'll look at that shelf like structure in just a minute uh, the organ of cordy okay anyway your hearing your hearing organs are in here in the cochlea uh sense of balance semicircular canals Actually, we said this was dynamic or moving equilibrium. Static equilibrium are some structures in this vestibule, two different structures in this vestibule area, okay? Uh, branches of the nerve. Um, the vestibular cochlear nerve, and this Roman numeral eight, it means it's cranial nerve number eight. These are nerves that come straight off the brain. They don't go through the spinal cord, okay? Uh, as you can tell, uh, cranial nerve number seven is known as the facial nerve. This one, oh yeah, okay. This one is going to sense. Um, this one's going to sense pain. Um, 
where these other ones, the vestibular cochlear nerve branches, the vis, oh, look at this, look at this vestibular cochlear nerve or this ac acoustic nerve, and look at the branch. Look, there's one big branch going over to the vestibule for balance, and one huge branch going over to the cochlea for hearing. They come together and track up to the brain that way, okay? Facial nerve goes up to the brain in the, uh, through some other openings and goes to another part of the brain. Um, okay, next slide. I just wanted you to look at this thing and see where you see all three of these little bitty bones on the on the head of a penny. And the first one is the malleus. And like I said, we'd have the eardrum right here. Picking up some sound vibrations and it would be vibrating back and forth and it's tapping on the on the malleus which makes it start tapping onto the it starts tapping onto the anvil anvil starts tapping onto the stirrup okay and the stirrup is attached it's real close to what's called a round window starting with this starting where the cochlea is this snail shaped structure that houses the organs for hearing, okay? I messed that up some. Not the best artist, just in case you hadn't noticed that. But, um, so malleus was hammer. I'd like you to use the malleus incus and stapes, okay? As far as start learning those, and some books will say hammer, anvil, and stirrup, okay? Mainly because of their shapes. All right. Uh, like I said, these are called the three. You saw this on the first slide. These are the three auditory, three auditory ossicles. Okay. Uh, ossicles refers to bone, osteocyte, osteoblast, um, osteoclast. All the osteo stuff refers to bone. Okay. All right, next, let's see what we got. Okay, here's the situation where this would be considered, uh, uh, well, if bone is forming, look, this, this is a problem, and they might have to surgically go in and do this, where autosclerosis is the name of the disease, where this stapes is supposed to be here. Here's edges of it. This is pretty cool. Look at it. And so here's part of my uh, incus. Tapping onto the stirrup right here at their connection, okay? Tapping onto that. It's supposed to tap onto the oval window, which is at the start of this cochlea, which I tried sketching before. Let's see if I can do better this time. And no, I can't. Yes, I can. Oh, yeah. There we go. So here's the cochlea. We still have to take a look at the internal stuff in here. It'll be tomorrow. All right, back with this. If bone starts to form in this area, if we, I'm changing my color here, I like blue for bone. If bone starts forming in this area in here and it hooks the, um, and the, the stapes gets ossified, onto this bone okay then we don't have there's no free movement here okay it's it's stuck on there so any sound vibrations that come through here uh it's very much being you could say muffled or not even being passed on at all uh, the stirrup is not able to tap onto this first part of the cochlea okay so this is a part, if there's anything wrong with the ear, ear canal or anything, or if wax builds up and, and um, solidifies the, cock, the tympanic membrane, um, or as you get older, the tympanic membrane is less flexible, uh, or if we have the situation autosclerosis, this is something called conductive deafness. where the sound ray waves are just not being conducted on, <clears throat> okay? Um, 
that are my semicircular canals, <clears throat> the nerves coming from that. Um, it starts tracking together. If there's something wrong with how the nerves are going to the brain um, through the nervous system, um, then that is something referred to as sensory neural deafness. Okay, so those are two types of deafness. All right, wait a minute, let's go back to this one, Cockley. Uh, let's go back to my red. All right, next slide. Okay, here's another look at the stuff. TM was tympanic membrane. You didn't have to know the helix part. You didn't have to know the the anti-helix. And we did learn the name Oracle. Uh, haven't done round window yet. That's part of the, the cochlea. Ooh, here's some bones again. The malleus, incus, and stapes you had to know. Semicircular canals for balance. Cochlea, the snail-shaped thing for hearing. Cochlear nerve, okay. Um, would be this branch also, that branch going through bone. Vestibular branch would be here. I'll put a V in there, vestibular branch. A v in there for the vestibular branch. Uh, you know, this stuff is bone right here that we're into. Eustachian tube or auditory tube. Um, just uh, another look at with some of the things labeled. And I, I like this diagram because it had different parts colored. You can easily make out the difference between between bone tissue and some other tissues around here and fatty deposits uh, with the, with being in the yellow all right and last thing we will need to get into this to we will get into this tomorrow but it's, this is going to be inner part of the cochlea and look at this shelf that shoves down on these on these hair follicles okay like I said, I had a roommate before who, who, when I walked into like the living room and the TV was on, it would almost hurt my ears. And but it had to be up that loud for him to hear it, because uh, he had he'd listened to lots of loud music and things. And his um, and these cilia, this this shelf, this tectorial membrane keeps getting pushed down into these sensory fibers here. And eventually it can damage those. So his his were damaged. They were cut back to about here. Just from this shelf constantly pounding into them. And so he had to have it that loud. So we had stronger vibrations coming and putting the sh pushing the shelf down more. So we'd be able to hit these fibers that were down here. Okay. And once it's hit that and stimulate those, this nerve cell would track up to the brain. So and we will get more of that tomorrow. And thank you very much.